results as adversarial industry thought leaders go head to head in a real talk deathmatch. Monty Munford, Forbes. Roger Ver, Bitcoin Cash. Tony Vase, Florida State University. Uh, it's definitely no introduction, I would imagine. If you don't know who they are, then who are you, basically? Uh, this apparently is round three between these two heavyweights, Fraser and Annie. The first one was in Mexico, right? The second one was in, on a crypto cruise or something like that. Uh, and apparently the moderator last time was Tobe's girlfriend. Oh, right. <laughs> Just to let you know, me and Roger do not have a relationship yet, but um, you know, I'm always open to offers. Um, okay, Bitcoin. It's not a worse start. <laughs> Hands up who's got Bitcoin. Yo! Hands up who's got Bitcoin cash. Yo! Ooh, level picking. My head show probably went up on that first one. Okay, how do we begin here? What do we start? Blocks. What about big blocks and small blocks? Does that make any sense? So I, I, I'd like to explain exactly why I'm such a big fan of Bitcoin Cash. So yesterday I got to give a talk here, and on every single person's table out there, we had the private key on a golden ticket where you could scan it with the, any wallet that gave the important private key and claim your Bitcoin Cash right from the wallet. We gave five dollars to every single person that was in the room yesterday worth of Bitcoin Cash, One, two, and that was only one. possible because the fees were, were low. If we tried to do that exact same thing with the BTC version of Bitcoin today, it would be impossible because to move the $5 from the private key on the piece of paper into your phone, it would cost $3, and then you would have $2 left on your phone. But to send the $2 from your phone to the next person, it would cost $3, which you wouldn't have. And so that's an example of how Bitcoin, the BTC version of Bitcoin's usefulness has been undermined in commerce because the fees currently are about $3 per transaction on the BTC version of Bitcoin, whereas the fees are a fraction of a penny on the Bitcoin Cash version of Bitcoin. And that's why it seems so clear to me that anybody that's trying to actually use a version of Bitcoin for payments, Bitcoin Cash actually works as money. The BTC version no longer does. And I say that as the first person in the world, thank you. I right. think that is the first person in the world to have started using Bitcoin in commerce for non-black market things. Strong start. So, <laughs> so uh, very simple rebuttal. Uh, so for the last, at least the next last nine months or more, uh, I use Bitcoin pretty much every day. I have not paid more than $1 fee uh, for a Bitcoin transaction over the last nine months, so I have no idea where the $3 average is coming from. Uh, Are you the and uh, I have no idea where it's coming from, uh, but um, I have not well, had to pay right over a dollar for a fee in about a year. Pull out your wallet right now and send me some BTC, and let's see what the fee calculation is, and we'll find out right now. Whoa. Whoa. My wallets allow me to set any fee I like. I can send Roger right now uh, $5 with a five cent fee and it will go through. With a five cent fee? Sure. Please do, and I'll post it all online later. We can see they get stuck in the mempool pool for days or potentially weeks. It's not going through with a five cent fee. Why is there such a difference in opinion here? Isn't it obvious which one's going to win out of you two? I think the difference. Well, in... we already know which one won. Uh, Roger hasn't. Uh... So can, I, can I watch and see the fee? Can I look over your shoulder? Is that okay? Sure. I will send you five. So you're sending me five dollars. So. Get a camera. The, uh, uh, camera. The, all right, I'll say it. I'll say it. The, on this particular wallet, the default fee is one dollar thirty-three cents. The default fee. Um, I go click a button that says change fee. I, it's set to standard. I can just click a button and set it to low. That drops my fee to 27 cents. Still too uh, high. That's the low version. Still too I can, high. I can make it lower than that because I can choose my own fee. Uh, it depends how much time you want to spend since we're limited on time. Uh, but right now I'm sending you, I'll just use the 27. I can lower it to 5 cents if you like. Lower it to 5 cents and we'll see how sure. many days it's stuck in a new Set custom fee, Satoshi's per byte. 
Five satoshis per byte? I'm not sure how many cents that would be. Seven, seven cents. cents. To the full seven, seven, cents. <laughs> seven, seven, seven to one satoshi per byte, like all Bitcoin Cash transactions are. No, no one uses Bitcoin Cash. That's why it's so much cheaper. <laughs> <seven. laughs> so that's an absolute five, and anyone can go and see the number of transactions happening on the network. Let's go ahead and lower it to one satoshi per byte. Right, get on, we've only got a few minutes. Lower it to one satoshi per byte, and I'll be. One cent feet. There it goes. What does it say? It says transaction success? Well, it's, it's set. They, okay. it, it needs to get confirmed. So here you go, Tone. If that gets included in the block today, I'll donate $10,000 to the charity of your choice. <laughs> That's how confident I am that a one Satoshi per byte fee on the Bitcoin network they no longer go through, and that's why I switched all of my time and effort and resources to promoting Bitcoin Cash, because it still works as peer-to-peer -peer cash for the world, as described in the very title of the white paper. It has a giant, passionate community of users all over the world that are busy and intent on building this peer-to-peer -peer cash for the electronic, for, for the entire world, because that's the name of the game. Let's bring more economic freedom to the entire world by having peer-to-peer -peer cash. If you just have some sort of store of value, whole thing, how does that help people in Africa? How does that pe help people all over the world? How does that help people in the first world even? We need to have something that works and needs to work for everyone, every time, every place, quickly, reliably, and cheaply. And the BTC version of Bitcoin no longer does, Bitcoin Cash does. And that's why in the long term, I'm confident that the market cap of Bitcoin Cash will surpass the BTC version of Bitcoin because Bitcoin Cash offers fast, cheap, reliable transactions. The BTC version has slow, expensive, unreliable transactions. When you try and make uh, a cheap transaction, you'll see it's gonna be stuck in the mem pool. Thank you, Tom. Well, uh, normally, um, I still occasionally use on-chain for $5 transactions, because I'm a little bit lazy, but I should really be using Lightning for those transactions, uh, because you can't send every single transaction on-chain. Uh, Bitcoin will never scale that way, and uh, it just doesn't work. That's why we needed to get Segwit in there. The reason why fees got incredibly high and people were able to use the high fees at the time uh, to promote other blockchains is because Segwit was adversarial. Nobody wanted to get it in. Uh, since Segwit has been in, the fees have dropped substantially, but Segwit allows second layer scaling. All of these $5 transactions should really happen over the Lightning Network, which isn't fully in production yet will be soon. It's significantly better than it was six months ago. And um, I've already started using it. Um, many people are. And give it another year and every single transaction from $5 and under will be over Lightning. Eventually, all transactions under $100 will be on Lightning. Eventually, all transactions under $1,000 will be over Lightning. If you really need it on chain, you will have to pay a higher fee, which I actually don't mind paying. I don't mind paying a 20 cent fee. Uh, I like supporting the miners, which are keeping our system secure. So tell me, what, what lightning wallet are you using? Um, a player. I also have a blue wallet as well. Uh, new ones are coming out. I haven't tried Zap yet. So if I want to set up a lightning wallet on my phone, what should I do? Just download a player. And am I in control of my own private keys there? On a player, yeah. Or you can also route it through your own node. Through your, you should have a node. So what? Uh, if you really want to make it safe, you so want to have. You, you can go through the. Uh, so if I want to make it node. safe and be in charge of my own money completely, like I can with an ESPV wallet on Bitcoin Cash, what would I need to do? Well, wait a minute. You're only gonna have a limited amount of money on that Lightning node. You're gonna have what? Twenty, thirty, forty, fifty dollars, hundred dollars, whatever you would fund that Lightning with. You should still keep your Bitcoin on a hardware wallet. So with Bitcoin Cash, anyone can set up a wallet. It'll literally take longer to download the wallet app than it does to start using it and you are in 100% complete control of your own money and there's nothing that anybody can do to stop it. With a Lightning wallet, how many hours or days is it gonna take you to get everything set up to be in 100% complete control of your own money, tell me? Uh, of your own money? Yes, uh, but you money. shouldn't have everything on the Lightning Network. It's a second layer scaling solution. So if you I should want... still keep your Bitcoin either in your own node or on a on chain. So you're not answering my question. My question is, if I want to be in 100% complete control of my own money with a Lightning wallet, how long is it going to take me? You shouldn't do that. What should I do? What should I do if I want to be in charge of my own money and use Lightning wallet? What should I do? 
You can set it up, but it'll take you a little bit of time. A little how bit long? means how long? I don't know, I haven't set it up that way yet. So, so wait a minute, when you're using Lightning Wallet, you're not in control of your own funds, you're trusting somebody else? Yeah, I'm okay trusting somebody else with $20, $30 of my funds. I don't really have a good problem with that. And how often do you top back up your $20 or $30 in your Lightning Wallet? I don't, it's $20 or $30. So you never spend the twenty or thirty dollars? No, no, I don't. I don't back it up. I don't write down the private key and and hide it and put it in the safe deposit box. Oh, so you don't, you don't make backups of your private keys. You don't top up your Lightning wallets. You don't even use the money in the Lightning wallet. Is that what you're saying? No, no, I use it, but I don't. So when you use it and you no longer have money in the Lightning wallet, what do you do to put more money in the Lightning wallet? Just transfer more, more Bitcoin into a more secure wallet. And about twenty or thirty dollars at a time. Yeah. And what is the fee to transfer that 20 or $30 additional money into your Lightning Wallet? Uh, one cent, like I just sent you. So actually I have news about that. I was checking my wallet here, and it looks like because the fee was so low, it looks like the network didn't even detect the transaction, and it's not, uh, it looks like it didn't even get relayed by the node, so it hasn't even arrived in my wallet yet, so. I've just got a message here that says- Whoa, 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 whoa. No, I see the transaction. <laughs> I feel like look together. I, I don't have the transaction list, so. Yep, 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 yep. What does it say? It says I confirm, but yep. that is your transaction. And so it says priority 23,836 out of 24,355 transactions. So that means that if every single transaction on the Bitcoin network were to completely stop right now, and every single block is only clearing the backlog of transactions on the Bitcoin network right now, it's going to take a about 10 blocks, so about an hour and a half before his transaction gets included in a block. If every single Don't other Bitcoin transaction stops. Don't I have a day to get the 10,000 dollars? You do, and it's not gonna make it because the, 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 the network, people are making transactions every single time. So if the entire- Right, network, people are using the network. You should not be paying one cent fee when so many people are using the network. Or you could just switch to Bitcoin Cash and pay a tenth of a penny per but transaction. But no one uses it, who am I gonna send it to? Pull out your wallet right now. Well, I don't have a Bitcoin cash wallet. I, have a Bitcoin I guess he likes wasting his money. Is there anything you need to drill? Do you agree on anything? Uh, I don't know. How many old coins do you like, Roger? Because I, you know, I don't like them all. Uh, what? So, uh, what do we agree on? Well, your debate with Noriel Rabini, who doesn't like any coins, would have been. Uh, uh, I would have had to take your side on that one. Uh, but uh, so. There's other problems with uh, with the way Bitcoin Cash was scaling. Is that we don't have infinite free storage. With as blocks get bigger, I'm actually actually wouldn't be surprised once everyone is using Lightning for all of these little transactions that the block size would actually get lowered uh, below one megabyte. Uh, Luke Dazur uh, really wants it to be 256 kilobytes now, and there and there's a reason for that. And the biggest reason is, it, the, the bigger the cumulative size of the blockchain, the more discouraged you are from running a node. And the less nodes we have around the world, the more centralized this decentralized system becomes. And then I may not even trust it anymore to be decentralized censorship resistant money. When was the last time you made a purchase with your Lightning Network wallet? I don't. I use on chain. I don't have a problem paying 20 cent fees and they're all going through. I'm one of the bad guys right now on Bitcoin spamming the Bitcoin blockchain because I barely use Lightning. Uh, so do you, use, do you use Lightning wallets to pay for things or not? No, I still use on chain. I pay a 20 cent fee, I don't have a problem with it. Because I don't buy things that are that cheap. So just to my, my, my Bitcoin transactions are usually $20 and up, but I don't have a problem paying the 20 cent fee. So to clarify, so you're busy advocating all day every day that everybody use something that you don't even use yourself? I don't need to, I'm happy paying a 20 cent fee. If I wasn't, if I really need to start sending $1 transactions and I'm too cheap and I wanna pay a one cent fee, I will absolutely use my Lightning Wallet. I'm okay using the on-chain right now, it's not that clutter for me, and I don't buy little things, but if I was, my, the store on Tonebase.com accepts Lightning transactions, um, but- how, how often or how many times per day do you get payments um, via yeah, Lightning for your stuff? I don't manage that part of my website, I'll so, so, that. You're, you're on the ropes a bit there, mate, I think. He was clever and getting the microphone, so he looks like his boss again. <laughs> we haven't got long, 
We're gonna do well, it. Well, the, the, the fact that I don't even use the Lightning Network yet tells That's you that cool. it's not absolutely necessary. Unchained Bitcoin still works just fine, but when it gets really congested and I and I really want to pay cheap fees, of course I'll switch to Lightning. So I have, I guess, one final question, maybe. So in our first debate three years ago, and I quote, Tom Bay said. Segwit solves all of Bitcoin scaling problems immediately. Do you still agree with that? Yeah, I mean the the transactions became pretty cheap within a few months. Per transaction at the moment, and it was absolutely not. The average transaction was fifty dollars at the end of twenty seventeen, and I myself personally well, was paying thousands of dollars in fees for single Bitcoin transactions. Well, that's because your business revolved around micropayments. No, which, uh, I was moving the tens of thousands of dollars around at a time, and I was paying a thou around a thousand to a thousand five hundred dollars in fees per transaction to move those BTC around. These have been under one. You, I, every transaction I've sent has been pretty much under a dollar fifty for the last nine months. They all went through fairly quickly. And I could have done it lower. There's no money in my wallet. It doesn't look like it even got broadcast into the network. Oh, come on. <laughs> yes, it did. Are you, you, are you sure you didn't give me a Bitcoin cash wallet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure I used a BTC address. Please text but me the address. This, we'll this, this is a clever move with the microphone, by the way. Okay, so we're going to have, like, we've got a shout for which one he likes, right? So... Uh, <laughs> there you go. All, there's always one. Uh, Who likes fast, cheap, reliable transactions? Whatever the coin is, anything that right, works. Guys, is what I if, if if Bitcoin Cash <laughs> had as many transactions as Bitcoin does right now, their fees would actually be bigger. Uh, there was a report about nine months ago where someone went and took a look at uh, the Bitcoin Cash current fee and compared it to when Bitcoin had that kind of action, which was like back in 2011, the, this is the equivalent. The amount of fees going on on Bitcoin Cash, uh, Bitcoin had that kind, of, uh, that kind of action back in 2011, and those fees were lower than Bitcoin Cash fees are. Okay, awesome, and, awesome, awesome. And also, there was like one wallet that was sending like 80% or 60% of all of Bitcoin Cash transactions. Whose wallet was that, Roger? Uh, Okay, stop it now. Uh, let's hear a round of applause for Tom. Round of applause for Roger. I'll just call it a draw, ladies and gentlemen. Round of applause for these two nutters. <laughs>